Hello everyone, welcome to CADCAM C Tutorials. In this video, we are going to simulate a beam subjected to unique cell tensile loading using the ANSYS workbench. First, we will find the solution of the problem using the analytical method and then we will compare the results of ANSYS workbench with the results of analytical method. So, let us first move to the problem statement. So, the problem statement is like this. We have a beam of rectangular cross section area. The height of the cross section is 400 mm that is the 400 mm and width is 250 mm. The original length of the beam is 3000 mm. Now one end of the beam is fixed and another end is subjected to tensile loading of 100 kN. Here for this problem the beam is made up of structural steel and the Young modulus of steel is 200 GPa. For this particular problem we have to find out the maximum stress and deformation that is produced inside the beam. So first we will find the stress and deformation using the analytical method. So we know that the stress produced inside the beam is load per unit cross section area. Now here in our case the cross section area is a rectangle. So the area of rectangle will be nothing but height into width. Now here height and width are provided in mm. So the cross section area of the beam will be 250 into 400 millimeter square. Here the load acting on beam is 100 kN and if we convert the load from kN to Newton, then it will be 10 to the power of 5 Newton. So we can find out the stress induced inside the beam and that is nothing but load per unit cross section area. By substituting the value of cross section area and load into the formula of stress, we can find out the stress as 1 mega Pascal. Now let us go for the deformation. So here the original length of the beam is 3000 mm. Cross section area is nothing but 250 into 400 mm square. Load acting on a beam is 10 to the power of 5 Newton. Now we have to convert the Young modulus from Giga Pascal to Newton per mm square. And it will be 200 into 10 to the power 3 Newton per millimeter square. By inserting all the value of length, cross section area, load and Young modulus, inside the formula of deformation that is PL upon AE, we can find out the maximum deformation as 0 0.015 mm. Now let us move to the ANSYS workbench and we will find the results by using the ANSYS. So here it is the starting window of ANSYS workbench. Here you can find different analysis system for different problems. Here for this particular problem we are using the static structural as our analysis system. To invoke any analysis system, left click on the system and drag it in the screen like this. Now here to perform the analysis we have to follow certain steps. So the first step will be creation of geometry. To create the geometry, double click on geometry and you can see here it will open the design modeler window. Once the design modeler window will open, we have to create our geometry that is in our case it is 1D geometry that is line. So to create geometry, first we will convert unit from meter to millimeter. So select here units and select here millimeter. Now here we will create our geometry or our domain. So right click on the XY plane and select here locate. Now here we have to create one line and for that we will go for the sketching line and create one line like this. Now here H indicates it will create horizontal line. So left click once and it will create horizontal line. After creating line we have to give it dimensions. So we will go for the dimensions. Select here general. Now select here line and drag it dimension over here. Now here H indicates this line is horizontal. Now here to give the dimension, here you can give dimension for H1 that is for this line and that is 3000 mm. So enter here 3000. After giving the dimension, click on this fit to the screen or zoom to fit. So this is our entire domain. But here in the modeling window, you can't see any body or any part. And we have to apply forces and boundary condition on bodies. So first we have to convert this sketch into the body. For that we will go for the concept, lines from the sketches and here we will select the sketch that we have created. Click on apply and select here generate. Once you click on generate, it will create one part and one body and now all the forces and constraints will be applied to the line body. Now once you have created the line body, you have to assign the cross section area for this line body. And that cross section area will be only for the representation purpose. It will not take any part in the simulation or in the discretization of the domain. 
Now first you click on the line body and here you can see that we haven't assigned any cross section area to this line body. To assign the cross section area, we'll go for the concept cross section and select here the rectangle. Now here we have to assign the height and width of the rectangle. So here we'll assign 400 mm and here we'll assign 250. That is the height and width of the domain. After assigning the height and width to the cross section, we'll select here the line body and we'll select here from this drop down, select here rect1 that is the cross section that we have created earlier. So select here rect1 as a cross section for this line body and click on generate. Now after generating you can't see the cross section for this domain. To see the cross section we'll go for the view and select here cross section solids. Once you click on the cross section solid it will show the cross section for this particular beam. Now here this is all about the geometry and now we'll go for the next step. Now we'll go for the answers workbench and double click on this model that is the next step. So once you double click it will open the mechanical window. In the mechanical window first we have to discretize the domain or we have to divide entire domain into the elements. After discretizing the domain we have to apply the boundary condition and forces on the body. And after applying the boundary conditions and forces on the body we have to generate the solution. So the first step is to divide entire domain into subdomain and for that we will go for the meshing. So click on the mesh and here inside the meshing you can see here sizing option. So here we have to define the size of the element that we are going to create. Now here for this particular problem the length of the beam is 3000 mm. Now if we divide the entire beam into 10 elements so each element will be having the length of 3000 divided by 10 that will be 300 mm. So for sizing we will click on this plus button. Under the sizing we will go for the element size. In element size enter here 300 as element size. So it will divide entire domain into 10 subdomain or elements. After entering the element size right click on mesh and select here generate mesh. So once it will generate the mesh you can find here that the entire element is divided into 10 elements. So here you can count this will be the 10 elements. After dividing the entire domain into subdomain we have to apply the boundary conditions and for that we will go for the static structural. So right click on static structural insert and select here fixed support. Now we have to apply fixed support on this end and for that select here vertex or node and then select here this end point and click on apply. So once you select here static structural it will show you that you have applied one constraint that is the fixed support and at this point. After that we have to apply the force. So right click on the static structural insert and select here the force. Now here we have to select another end point that is this. You can find here this is another end for the force. So select here this end point, click on the apply. Now we have to apply the force in x direction. So from the vector, we will select here the components. So it will divide entire force into three component. Now here we have to apply force in x direction. So we will enter x component of force as 10 to the power 5. So enter here 10 to the power 5 and click on OK. Once you enter here the force, click on the static structural and it will show you that you have applied one constraint that is fixed support and on another end you have applied the force in x direction and of the magnitude of 10 to the power 5 newton. Once you have applied the boundary condition and the force you have to just right click on the solution go for the insert deformation and select here total. Another we have go for the solution right click we'll go for the beam tool and select here just beam tool. Now here we we'll select here right click on the solution and create on solve. So once the calculation is completed you can see the results by just clicking on the total deformation. So select here total deformation and you can see here the result of total deformation that is the maximum deformation is 0.015 mm. You can find here unit that is mm. So the maximum deformation is 0.015 mm. From the analytical solution also we have found the total deformation is 0.015 mm. Again we will go for the beam tool 
and select here the direct stress. So here you can find that the stress is uniform in the entire beam and the magnitude of the stress is 1 mega Pascal. So in analytical solution also we have found the maximum stress as 1 mega Pascal. So the solution of Francis is having very good agreement with the analytical results. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video then please hit on the like button, share it and subscribe to this channel KDKMC Tutorials. Thanks.